when Nike came to me with this idea of making five million yellow wristbands, selling them for a dollar a piece, helping us raise five million bucks at Livestrong, um, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? That, that'll never work. Raise them up, everybody. America is wrapping its wrists in yellow. The yellow response showed that people wanted to be a part of something bigger. Riders in the tour wore them. The Olympics in Athens were a month later, and Nike gave them out to all their athletes at the Olympics. Um, you had a presidential campaign later that year where John Kerry wore it every day. We sold, you know, 20 million the first four or five months, and I think there was over 80 million sold, you know, over the period of time that, that we were selling them. It was a way for people not only to relate to, you know, one of the most tragic diseases that humanity has seen, but also be part of the story. It changed the foundation forever because it brought tremendous resources, tremendous attention, international attention. And with that, just unlimited opportunity for new programming and the ability to impact more lives. Before the Lance Armstrong Foundation, what it was like to have cancer was totally different. It was um, much more um, private and much more isolated. Lance removed the stigma of being a young adult with cancer. It wasn't something to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. It almost put you in like the cool kids club of, yeah, I had cancer, watch out. I'm tough, I'm a survivor young adults with cancer. Those issues are totally different than little kids with cancer or old people with cancer. There wasn't a movement to bring it all together. We wanted to fix all that. How do we make a difference? How do we demand change? How do we ask leadership? To I spent about an issue? probably the better part of a year going around to his cancer events to see for myself what was going on there. One of his stops was at a children's hospital to see young cancer patients. And he would not allow me to go in the rooms with him. It's like, no, this is not a media event. I'm doing this for these kids. All right, you, if you want to be totally cynical and tell me that was for show, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm not saying that makes anything else that he did okay, but I'm not willing to say that there was no, not a sincere molecule in his body. I've seen him be the last guy to see people. The last guy. He would come out and he would be a wreck, a wreck. Getting cancer is a really scary thing. And man, when you emerge from the other end and you're not dead, it's pretty cool. And you want other people to realize that you've got hope in your life. And frankly, you had the resources to turn that into something that benefited a lot of people. But if it wasn't a cynical tool from the start, I think towards the middle and on, I think it was. I mean, we used to refer to it as the cancer shield. But it certainly was an influence in the way people thought about him and their unwillingness to believe that it could even be possible that he was doping. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.